Okay, welcome to video two for the algebra flip chart. And our next tab is the number system and properties. So we're gonna open up to our next tab and we're gonna do the number system and properties. All right, so the number system is split up into real numbers and imaginary numbers or complex numbers. So most of the numbers that we dealt with or pretty much all the numbers that we dealt with in algebra one were the real numbers. And then in algebra two, you'll get more into the complex numbers. But let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and use this straight edge so it looks kind of neater. Um, I'm gonna make myself a chart so that we can split it up into the complex numbers and the real numbers. So real numbers are most of the numbers. So um, are actually all the numbers in algebra one almost. And so I'm gonna put the real numbers over here. So these are the real numbers. And over here are the complex numbers. So let's talk about what a complex number is. Another name for the complex numbers are the imaginary numbers. And um, so imaginary. Okay, and the example of the imaginary numbers or the complex numbers are square roots of negative numbers. So like square root of negative one, that's an imaginary number. Square root of negative five is an imaginary number. The opposite of the square root of five, excuse me, of the square root of negative five is an imaginary number. Uh, the square root of negative nine is an imaginary number. And when you get to algebra two, they're gonna tell you that the square root of negative one is a little lowercase i, and this one equals three i. Not that you need to know that, but when you get in algebra two, you'll need it. So back over here, we've got the real numbers, which is most of it. So the real numbers are split into two categories. So let's get back our ruler again and draw a straight line because all real numbers are either um, rational or irrational. So most of them are rational. So most of the ones we deal with are rational. So let's talk about the irrational numbers first. So the irrational numbers. The irrational numbers are the decimals that go on and on forever that never repeat. So decimals that go on forever and do not repeat. So the most famous irrational number is pi, like pi day, because remember pi day is my birthday, so one of my favorite days. Um, so pi is an irrational number. So the square root of a number that you can't take the square root of, like the square root of three, that's an irrational number. If you put in your calculator, it's gonna be this long decimal that goes on and on forever that never repeats. Um, the thing could have a pattern though, so like point zero one zero zero one zero 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 one dot dot dot. Even though that has a pattern, you can't draw it with a bar. So if you can draw it with a bar, it's rational. But if you can't draw it with a bar because it's a decimal that goes on and on forever and does not repeat, it's irrational. So all the other ones are rational. Okay, so the rational numbers, that's the fractions. Uh, all the fractions that are a ratio of an integer to an integer. Um, the only fraction that's not rational would be like if you had one that had a square root in it. Like if you said the square root of five over two, that's irrational. But all the, like we would say, normal fractions are rational. All the decimals that end and all the decimals that repeat. So inside rational are the integers. And the integers are the whole numbers and their opposites. So none of the decimals or the fractions are um, integers. Integers are like five and, and negative five and that kind of stuff. So trying to make this kind of neat. All right, so inside rational are the integers. So what is a number that's rational that's not an integer? Well, something like two thirds or 0.7, or 0.3 with a line over it, or negative two and one fifth, or anything like that. Um, so any of the decimals that end and any of the fractions that don't reduce to whole numbers or integers. So inside, integers are the whole numbers. So the whole numbers are like zero, one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. Up and all the way up, but it includes 0. 
So the whole numbers, and how you can remember that, is whole has an O in it. So the only whole number that's not natural is zero. So the only number we can put there is zero. Okay, and then inside that are all the natural numbers, or also, they're also called the counting numbers. It's natural for a little kid to count and starting at like one. So the natural numbers are like one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. The only number that's whole that's not natural is zero. And then the integers are the negative ones or the, the um, opposites of the whole numbers. So like negative five, negative seven. Oops, I just put that negative seven in the wrong place. Oops. So negative seven needs to go in the integer bubble. So negative seven, negative 11, negative 10 over two, which is negative five. So that goes there too. Um, so those are all integers. So you do want to reduce them first. So natural numbers could also be square root of nine, which is three. It could be um, 10 over two, which is five. So those are all of the, the number system. So then let's also talk about, in this tab, we have the properties. So the properties. So the first property that we usually do is the commutative property. And then the commutative, which is a weird word, does not have an N in it. The commutative property is when order changes. Um, so something like, if you have like 2 plus 3 equals 3 plus 2. Order changes. Um, there's the commutative property of addition. And there's the commutative property of multiplication. There is no commutative property of subtraction or division because 2 minus 3 and 3 minus 2 aren't the same thing, and 2 divided by 3 and 3 divided by 2 are not the same thing. So that's the commutative property. This is the commutative property of addition, and this is the commutative property of multiplication. The next one is the associative property, which is the one you have to be careful abbreviating. Ha, 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 ha. Um, so the associative property, order does not change, only the grouping symbol changes, or the parentheses. So like if I had 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 1 plus 2 plus 3, and on this side I had the grouping symbols there, and on this side there. Again, there's also a associative property for multiplication, so A, B, C equals A, B, C. And again, you can have the parentheses here on this side and here on that side. So this is just the grouping symbols change. So the parentheses. Parentheses change. Order does not change in the associative property. Okay, so then there's the identity properties. There's the identity property of addition. And some people call that the additive identity, which is what I always called it. But um, some of you guys like identity of addition, but it's usually um, additive identity, and that's when you just add zero, and you get what you started with. There's the one of multiplication, and that's when you um, times by one, and you get what you started with. Um, then there is the distributive property, and it's technically called the distributive property of multiplication over addition. The distributive property is when you take the number on the outside and you times it by both of the numbers on the inside. So A times B plus A times C is AB plus AC. If this is a minus, then that's also a minus, but I'm not going to write that again. Um, then there's the multiplicative property of zero, which just says that if you multiply by zero, you always get zero. So N times zero equals zero. So multiplicative property of zero. Um, then there is the additive inverse property. And in the additive inverse property, that's when you add opposites together and you get zero. And then the multiplicative inverse property is when you multiply two things together. So like two thirds times three halves, and you get one. And you notice in multiplicative identity up here, you are timesing by one. In multiplicative inverse, you're getting one. And in additive identity, you're adding zero. 
in an additive inverse, you're adding two things to get zero. So these are opposites of each other, and these are reciprocals of each other. There are other properties, but these are the ones that we use the most in Algebra 1, and hopefully that helps.